This is a podcast by Sayasmag.com. Sayasmag, come out and play. Sayasmag, come out and play. Sayasmag, come out and play. Articles and other sources are directly quoted during the episode. Check the script to find out such quotes. The link to the script is in the episode's description. Oh, hello, dear English-speaking, reading, hearing listener. Welcome back to me at Science Mag, written Science NUG, the blog, dash podcast, dash Twitter and Instagram accounts, dash entity behind the unsuccessful e-shop Stuff and Go, written Stuff and Go, on Zazzle.com, which tells you science stories while reading the palm, but yet not being able to decipher the tree, and which talks to you thanks to the voice kidnapped via a voodoo wireless trick from a very, very dumb human. And which does all of this in English question mark. A language that is to proper English what a banana back of muffin a banana back of muffin is to something that doesn't scream human civilization is doomed. Today I'm gonna tell you the second part of a story about human placentas and plastics. Say it's back. A group of Italian researchers, aka the Italian Brains, aka the ITBs, study human placentas in search of microplastics fragments, that is, plastic particles smaller than half a centimeter. In doing so, the researchers find such pollutants in the placentas of women in good health and who have had normal pregnancies and deliveries. The ITBs study is therefore the first one revealing the presence of microplastics and in general of made man particles in human placenta. The Italian research team is led by medical doctor Antonio Ragusa, head of the Department of Woman, Mother and Newborn of the San Giovanni Calibita Fatebene Fratelli Hospital in Rome, and the team publishes its study in the Science Journal Environmental International. So, dear listener, in part one I told you about the microplastic classification story, and also about how the Italian brains select the women involved in their study, how they design and follow a plastic-free protocol to collect the placenta samples, and what kind of technique they Roman microspectroscopy they use to analyze the such samples. Now, all in all, the ITBs collect six placentas. Let's remember that from each placenta, the ITBs take and then analyze, precisely via Raman microspectroscopy, three pieces between about 20 and 30 grams of weight. The mean weight is 23.3. Of these three pieces, one comes from the maternal side of the placenta, one from the fetal side, and the third one from the corium Amniotic membranes, namely the two membranes that form the embryo sac, which is the structures that surround and protect the fetus. So, dear listener, let's see then what the ITBs find out. In four of the six collected placentas, the researchers find a total of 12 small fragments of non human something. How small, you ask? Well, 10 fragments are about 10 micrometers in size, while the other two are even smaller, being about 5 micrometers. Now, dear listener, just to get you an idea of how tiny these pieces of plastics are, think of this. One micrometer is one millionth of a meter, meaning that if a shorty like LeBron James were one micrometer, then one meter would be about the distance between Rome in Italy and Oslo in Norway, or New York and Miami in the US, or Hong Kong and Seoul in South Korea. So yeah, those 12 fragments are definitely tiny. And more in detail, five of them small things are found in the fetal side of portions of the placentas, four in the maternal side ones, and three in the choriamniotic membranes. Moreover, the ITBs say that the real amount of fragments in the each placenta could actually be way bigger, because the analyzed samples are just a small fraction of the placenta they come from. The sample's weight is indeed about 23 grams, while the placenta weights 26 times more, as in about 600 grams. 
sounds. Anyway, 12 fragments of non-human stuff are actually detected in the collected placentas. Now, the question is, what are these small pieces of something exactly made of? Well, dear listener, the Italian brains are able to say that these 12 things are made of plastic, hence they are microplastics fragments. And at this point, dear smarty smart listener, you are for sure wondering how the ITBs have been able to say 12 times, nodding and speaking like an entitled but with a good soul English duke of the 19th century. Oh yes, yes, this sample is clearly that of a piece of plastic, and not, I don't know, that of a particularly adventurous pollen grain which followed what it thought was a white rabbit and instead was a mean white blood cell doing a silly practical joke, or that of a not much bright soybean sprout very into Barnes' journey to the center of the earth. <laughs> well, dear smart smart listener, the answer is color, or better, pigmentation. All 12 fragments found in the placenta samples are indeed pigmented. And that of the pigments, pal, is not just a curiosity, it is an important issue. Let's see why. Dr. Ragusa and colleagues analyzed the placenta samples, as said, via the Raman microspectroscopy, and the Raman spectra from the samples often reveals, more than anything, the pigments used for plastic staining. And that's because the structure itself of the pigment molecules somehow boosts the Raman microspectroscopy's signals and intensity. So, as a first step, the ITBs compare their sample spectra with the over 12,000 swans of the world's largest spectral reference database, integrated with the spectral software Noitol they use. And guess what, dear listener? This overconfident, almost cocky, but at the end of the day, easygoing and collaborative Noitol software finds out the pigments contained in the fragments. At this point, the Italian brains compare these brands new data of theirs with those of another database, the one of the European Chemical Agency, the ECHA, an agency that works for the safe use of chemicals and is the center of knowledge of the sustainable management of chemicals. Thanks to this step, then, Dr. Ragusa and colleagues identified the pigments chemical formula, commercial name and UPAC name, that is the name given to organic stuff according to the UPAC rules, where UPAC stands for International Union of Pure and applied chemistry, an organization born in 1919 and formed by chemists from industry and academia who recognized the need for international standardization in chemistry. The ITBs are also able to get the pigments color index constitution number, which is a descriptor used to categorize dye or pigment in relation to its chemical structure. Finally, as the last step of their pigment investigation, our super efficient, tireless Italian researchers compare the Raman spectra of the 12 placentas located microplastic fragments also with those of the SLOP library of microplastics, which is a spectral library of plastic particles consisting of 148 reference spectra, including a diversity of polymer types, colors, and morphologies, a library created by Professor Chelsea Rochman Lab of the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology at the University of Toronto. So, dear listener, at the end of their quest, after all these comparisons and data mining, the Italian brains can say that all 12 fragments, labeled 1 to 12, are microplastics that contain pigments. And how come, dear listener, that all of them fragments, all of them contain pigments? Is it a coincidence? Is it fate? Is it a conspiracy secretly conspired by the evil TSLOTLMPLDLGWAMUOCBLAICMEBEBWB I T W R I O B J F G, the secret league of the let's make pollution less depressing, let's go with the massive use of colors, because let's admit it, colors make everything better. Even broccoli would be better if they were rainbowed instead of being just flat green. <laughs> Dear listener, the answer after the commercial break. You know that there is a good chance that the plastics in the food you normally eat? I know, eyes opening, right? Well, then why do you keep wasting an incredible opportunity to explore your own creativity? Cut the middleman, start eating plastics directly, and buy a 
power mind blowing 1001 ways to cook your plastics recipe book 1001 ways to cook your plastics will teach you how to make original colorful super tasty delicacies with plastics so that you'll amaze your guests with new tastes and unforeseen combinations like PVC pizza, PET padding, or polyester noodles and many many more 1001 ways to cook your plastics recipe book all derivatives have never been so yummy 1001 ways to cook your plastics is now even an app that will associate the QR code of the plastics you want to cook with the best recipes they fit in So, dear listener, all the microplastics found in the human placentas by the Italian brains contain pigments, specifically blue, dark blue, violet, pink, red, and orange ones. But why is it so? Well, pal, it is because pigments are used to color not just plastics, but paints and coatings too, and these guys are as ubiquitous as microplastics. Take the orange color pigment in fragment 1, for example. It is iron hydroxide oxide and it is used to color plastics and rubber, yes, but also a lot of cosmetics such as beauty balms or blemish balms, creams and foundations. Take the blue then, found in fragments 2, 3, 5 and 10. The blue comes from two compounds which are used not only for staining plastics but also for finger paints. Then there are the dark blue ones, pigment viola thrown in fragment 4 that is used specifically for textile cotton polyester dyeing, coating products, adhesives, fragrances and air fresheners, and pigment ultramarine blue, fragment 9, which in turn is mostly used in cosmetics, like for formulations of soap, lipstick, mascara, eyeshadow and other makeup products. And so on and on for the red, the violet and the pink ones. So, dear pal, to sum up, putting together all their data, the Italian brains can say that all 12 fragments fragments found in the women's placentas are microplastics and that nine fragments are paint slash coating slash dye microplastics applied for paints, coatings, adhesive, plasters, polymers and cosmetics and personal care products. Think for example the, to the micro beads used in cosmetics and personal health care products such as toothpaste, while the other three fragments are stained microplastics, more specifically polypropylene, also known as PP. And does this PP ring a bell, dear listener? No. Well, it should, pal, as PP belongs, like among others PE, PVC, PS, and PET, to one of the two most common types of plastics, the thermoplastics, that are the 80% of the produced plastics, the other type being thermosets, which includes, among others, polyurethane, aka PUR, polyester, silicone, and acrylic rains. Anyway, our placenta lover, Mr. Mr. Polypropylene PP is one of the plastics more commonly found in the oceans and seas. We are talking about uh, plastic pollution here, pal. Coming uh, the PP from rope, bottle caps, and netting. Besides, in total, PP represents a fifth, 21%, of global plastic production, along with PE, 36%, PVC, 12%, and PET, PUR, and PS, less than 10% each. These just mentioned plastic here, the listener, along with the polyester, polyamide and acrylic fibers, aka the PP and A, are the 92% of all plastics ever made, which in 2017 were about 8300 million tons. 8300 million tons. And considering that the annual global plastic production in 2017 reached 380 million tons, well, do the math to adjust the total amount of plastics ever produced till this year 2021. And 60% of all these ever made plastics, 60%, dear listener, has been discharged and is accumulating in landfills or in the natural environment. The 60% is around 4,900 million tons. 
Jones. Just to put it into perspective, dear listener, 49 million tons are, in terms of weight, about 49,000 aircraft carriers. And you place all of them carriers one after the other, and you go from Tokyo to San Francisco and back. What about, again, in weight, 13.5 thousand Empire State Buildings? Or, well almost uh, 3.3 billion uh, big fat uh, walruses uh, and you put them one after the other and you get to be called uh, the walrus whisperer so dear listener uh, you realize this is crazy because although first synthetic plastic uh, like bakelite uh, date back to the early 20th century the generalized non-military oriented use of plastics starts only after world war ii thus the massive plastic production starts only in the 50s this means that 8300 million tons of plastics and 4900 million tons of plastic garbage have been made in less than just 70 years. I mean, a lifespan and plastic usage ramped up by 25 folds over the last 40 years alone. For instance, dear listener, in 2016, the plastic material demand of the only European Union, Great Britain still included, plus Norway and Switzerland has been of 49 million tons. And dear listener, to now go full circle back to our plastic and human placenta center story, know that about 40% of these 49 million tons of plastic demand was for packaging, which is world's plastic largest market, and is predominantly composed of P, PT, and precisely our placenta cozy, Mr. Polypropylene PP. So, dear listener, there is a human Longus amount of plastics all around you humans, yes, but how exactly tiny pieces of plastics manage to end up inside your human bodies and even reach placenta tissues at all levels? Are microplastics indeed the space nanoprobes coming from mysterious interstellar object one eye Oumuamua, which is in reality a galactic factory belonging to an alien consortium with the human associate that produces space chocolate and universal chili? So if nanoprobes have to colonize pregnant women in order to induce pregnancy cravings for those products and therefore make their sales to skyrocket? Well, conspiracy freak, pal, you will get the answer to this in the next part of this episode. In the meantime, dear listener, take care, and if you spare some time and feel like doing it, please subscribe and or rate this podcast and or leave a comment on the blog and or take a tour on my stuff and go written stuff and Geo, eShop on Zazzle.com so you can see if there's something you like and or make a donation clicking on the donate button on this dumb blog's homepage. Ciao! Science man! Come out and play! Science man! Come out and play, science mag, come out and play. This is a podcast by sciencemag.com.